Guys, welcome to today's video. This is going to be part one of how to build the ultimate Lexus GX470 off-roading and overlanding build for under 20 grand. Now, I am not including the vehicle price in this necessarily, so just keep that in mind. And while that may seem expensive, I'm just trying to eliminate the insane level of modifications that some people do, such as front long travel suspension, solid front axle swaps, and other custom work like that. I'm just trying Trying to exclude that and do the ultimate every man's Lexus GX470 build. Let's get started with suspension. Off-roading and overlanding can be demanding on your vehicle, making suspension upgrades a critical investment. Not only do they improve your vehicle's performance on rough terrain, but they also increase comfort and control on long trips. When considering aftermarket suspension kits for your Lexus GX or other IFS rig, it's important to choose one that's specifically designed for your vehicle and can handle the added weight of any gear you plan to carry. Most of the kits on the market today do a pretty good job of optimizing performance for a wide range of vehicle weights and driving styles. I want this video to be focused on these off-the-shelf options to keep costs in check like I was saying before. So first, make sure to choose a reputable manufacturer that offers a warranty and has a proven track record of quality and reliability. Brands like Eibach, Old Man Emu, Bill Stein, Iron Man, Metal Tech 4x4, Dobinsons, and others have proven off-the-shelf kits for the Toyota Lexus platforms. Some of these manufacturers have different spring rate options that you can select on their websites to optimize your setup for the amount of weight you're carrying. Most of them also have some level of preload adjustment, which allows the same spring to be slightly more optimized for additional weight you may add in the future. For example, when I upgraded to a steel front bumper with a heavy wind, I changed the preload in my front Eibach Pro Truck lift coilovers from the first setting to the third setting to support the extra weight. Upgrading your suspension system can provide significant benefits to your vehicle's performance and durability, ensuring you have a safe and enjoyable off-roading and overlanding experience. It's also worth considering the role of anti-sway bars in your build. Generally, if you're looking for maximum articulation, removing the front sway bar while leaving the rear in place, or even upgrading to a stiffer rear sway bar with extended end links to account for the lift results in the maximum possible articulation with all stock control arms and travel length. Please see my full video on the subject for all relevant recommendations and disclaimers. You can check it out here. If you're looking for more high speed stability, then leaving the factory sway bar configuration in place should be sufficient. Finally, for suspension, it's a no brainer to upgrade your factory bump stops to some upgraded aftermarket market units. It takes 10 minutes and anyone can DIY the install. There are a great range of manufacturers out there that account for the increased bump stop utilization and performance needs required by off-roading. I personally love my Perry Parts Aero Bumps. They've performed perfectly. Bump stops give you that confidence and smoothness. On those rare occasions where you end up using that last 10 to 20 percent of suspension travel on compression. So that covers suspension. In addition to that, you should consider some brake upgrades. Brake upgrades should be considered when modifying your Lexus GX470 or other rig for off-roading and overlanding. The stock Toyota Lexus brakes in the first gen 470 do a pretty good job, but as you get to the thousand pound mark of additional weight, in addition to heavy larger diameter tires you should look into increasing the brake performance upgrading to performance pads and rotors can improve stopping power and reduce brake fade on long descents larger calipers can provide better clamping force and improve heat dissipation while upgrading brake lines can provide more consistent braking and resist damage from debris and rocks on the trail these upgrades are especially important when carrying heavy loads or towing as they can reduce strain on your vehicle's braking system. As I was saying, the limitation of the GX470 and 4th Gen 4Runner versus the Lexus GX460 and 5th Gen 4Runners 
is the rotor thickness. The earlier models have rotors that aren't thick and durable enough to resist fade on those long descents with heavy loads and big tires. I recommend looking into a GX460 slash 5th gen 4Runner front brake upgrade if you have one of the earlier models. As long as you swap calipers, pads, and rotors, it should bolt right up. In addition, as I mentioned before, consider upgrading to stainless steel braided brake lines throughout the entire system, not just on the front calipers. There's a flexible line from the body to the rear axle that should be extended and upgraded to stainless in addition to flexible lines on each rear caliper that need to be upgraded in order to ensure a significant improvement in brake feel and stopping power. If you leave even one rubber line in place, sure all the other stainless steel lines will prevent the ballooning effect that rubber lines love, but all the ballooning effects will just go to that one place, that one rubber line that's still in place. So to get that tight brake feel, make sure you replace all of the brake lines in your system to stainless braided. In addition to this, a quality DOT4 fluid can increase the braking system's resistance to fade on those long descents while towing or carrying heavy loads, like most overland vehicles. And it's an important note that DOT5 fluid will not work, so avoid it. Only consider DOT3, which is OEM, or DOT4, which is also compatible. Upgrading your suspension and brakes can significantly improve ride quality and handling off-road. Different systems and upgrades can provide better articulation, increase ground clearance, and improve stopping power, resulting in a more comfortable and controlled driving experience, which you're going to appreciate when you add close to a thousand pounds of weight to a vehicle that's riding three inches higher than it normally does. I currently have all the parts necessary to do a GX460 brake upgrade and I'll hopefully be filming a full install guide for you guys soon. Next, let's talk about wheels and tires. Wheels and tires are critical components for off-road performance. Larger tires with aggressive tread patterns provide better traction on uneven terrain, while stronger and lighter weight wheels can handle the stress of off-roading and prevent damage to your vehicle. Your stock wheels and tires are adequate for on-road performance and some relatively minor off-road terrain in my opinion. For example, the stock equipment can be a lot of fun on fire roads due to their lightweight and high speed optimization. However, don't expect the stock wheels and tires to last and perform in a harsh off-road terrain context. Let's start with tires. I want to make something crystal clear. Upgraded larger diameter tires are the single biggest bang for buck modification you can make. When it comes to off-roading, choosing the right tires is essential. Altering tires are a great upgrade from stock tires offering improved performance on both road and trail. They have more aggressive tread patterns and tougher sidewalls, providing better traction and protection from punctures. However, if you plan to tackle deep mud, loose sand, or extremely rocky terrain, mud terrain tires may be the better option. They have even more aggressive tread patterns with deeper grooves, providing superior traction in the most challenging conditions. You will definitely have to put up with more noise with a mud terrain tire, so keep that in mind mind if you daily drive your vehicle. Rugged terrain tires are a great option for those seeking off-road capability without the noise associated with mud terrain tires. They offer aggressive tread patterns and durable sidewalls, providing similar performance to mud terrain tires on tough terrain. However, they typically have less aggressive tread design, resulting in a quieter ride on paved roads. If you're looking for a tire that offers the best of both worlds, Rugged terrain tires are a great third option to consider. Ultimately, the type of tire you choose depends on the type of terrain you'll be driving on most often. Don't underestimate the difference the right tire can make in your off-road experience. I personally run 35 inch mud terrain tires from Milestar and I absolutely love them. They're a bit noisy, but they don't bother me too much because I don't really drive that much. However, on long trips, you definitely find yourself turning up the music or the podcast a little more than you normally would. Deciphering tire sizes in imperial format from a metric measurement can be a bit overwhelming, especially for those new to the off-roading scene or even new to the vehicle modification scene. It's important to understand how to convert tire sizes to make sure you're getting the right tires for your vehicle. To start, 
Let's take a look at a common tire size measurement, such as 315 70 17, which is the size of the tires I run on my personal rig. The first number, 315, represents the tire's width in millimeters. To convert this to inches, you simply divide by 25.4, which gives you a width of approximately 12.4 inches. The second number, 70, represents the tire's aspect ratio, which is the sidewall height as a percentage of the width. To determine the sidewall height in millimeters, you multiply the width by the aspect ratio and divide by 100. In this case, the sidewall height is approximately 220.5 millimeters or 8.7 inches. The taller the sidewall, the more the tire is able to absorb impacts and to uh, form itself over rocks as you try to crawl up them. Now, to get to the overall tire diameter in inches, you need to multiply the sidewall height by two and add it to the rim diameter. So for a 17 inch rim, you would multiply the sidewall height we just got by two, which equals 17.4 inches, and then add that to the rim diameter to get the overall tire diameter, which in this case is approximately 34.4 inches. Understanding how to convert metric tire sizes to imperial measurements is pretty crucial over here in the States when selecting the right tires for your off-road adventures. By knowing the tire's width, aspect ratio, and overall diameter, you'll be able to choose the perfect tire to meet your needs and to fit in the fenders with your preferred wheel offset. I've done a few videos on how to get 35 inch tires to fit in your fender well on the Lexus GX470. You can check some of those out here. 35s do require a significant amount of cutting and massaging, but the performance benefit versus 33s is definitely real. I think some people have brought up a good third option of running 34 inch tires, and they've said that it tucks pretty well and doesn't require as much cutting as 35s. I haven't personally tried it, but doing less cutting is always a well welcome option for many people. When selecting tires for an off-road vehicle, the load rating is an important factor to consider. Load rating refers to the maximum weight a tire can support at a given air pressure. Higher load ratings like E and F usually mean a tire is more durable and can handle heavier loads, but there are trade-offs to consider. One benefit of choosing a higher load rating is that it allows for greater payload capacity, which is important when carrying heavy gear or towing a trailer. Additionally, higher load rated tires can have thicker sidewalls, which can help protect against punctures and cuts when off-roading in rocky terrain. However, there are some downsides to choosing a higher load rating. One trade-off is stiffer ride quality, which can be less comfortable on rough terrain. Additionally, higher load rating tires are often heavier, which can negatively impact fuel economy and handling performance. On the other hand, Choosing a lower load range like C or D can result in a softer ride and better fuel economy, but this can come at the expense of durability and carrying capacity. It's important to balance these trade-offs and select a tire with a load rating that fits the specific needs of your off-road vehicle. I personally went from E-rated 255-80-17 Falcon Wild Peak 33 inch all terrains to D rated 315-70-17 Milestar Patagonia 35 inch mud terrains because the E rated tire felt like it was overkill and was resulting in a very stiff feeling ride on and off road. These 33 inch tires and the 35s ended up being virtually the same weight. So I'm definitely glad that I chose D rated Milestars. Most GX470 builds other than the extreme end of absolutely heavy weight rigs, will do better on low D tires. Regular tire maintenance is also crucial for optimal off-road performance. Tire rotation, balancing, and air pressure checks ensure even wear and help prevent blowouts. Keep your tires in top condition to maximize their lifespan and maintain traction on all terrains. Seriously guys, these are the only thing keeping you stuck to the road, so definitely make sure that you pay attention to regular maintenance of your tires. Now let's talk about the importance of wheel width and offset when trying to ensure your upgraded off-road tires will fit with only minor trimming of the wheel wells and body mount. When upgrading to larger off-road tires, the wheel width and offset become crucial factors in determining whether they will fit your vehicle without excessive cutting. 
The tire's width should exceed the wheel width in order to protect the wheel rims from rocks and other obstacles, along with an offset that can vary based on your suspension setup. A positive offset moves the tire inward, while a negative offset moves it outward. A positive offset runs the risk of rubbing on the upper control arm in a Toyota or Lexus off-road platform, while a negative offset can cause excessive leverage on the wheel bearing and lead to tire contact on the body mount and wheel well. Selecting the right offset ensures the tire doesn't excessively intrude on the wheel well or body mount to the point where no amount of cutting and hammering will fit them. With proper wheel width and offset, you can fit larger tires with only minor trimming and improve your off-road performance significantly, especially if you set things up to run negative offset wheels. Running negative offset wheels ensures that you get a wide track width. This is very advantageous for a feeling of stability when on the trail. I used to run stock wheels with the positive offset on my 33 inch tire setup and the rig was very scary and tippy when things got off camber on the trail. Running the negative offset widened out my track width just by a few inches and let me tell you that made all the difference in the world when it came to that confidence inspiring feeling of stability when things get a little tippy. It's also essential to have the right tools and equipment to handle any situation when you're far from civilization. One such tool that every off-roader should have is a tire repair kit and inflation system. An off-road tire repair kit typically includes plugs, patches, and a reamer. In addition, anyone venturing off-road needs to have an air compressor to reinflate tires, which I'll talk about in the recovery kit section of this video series. By using these tools, you can quickly repair a flat tire and get back on the trail without having to rely on a tow truck or changing the tire on the spot. So having a tire repair and inflation kit with you on your off-road adventures can save you time, money, and frustration, ensuring you have a safe and enjoyable experience. Upgraded suspension and wheels and tires can help you get more off-road performance on the trail than virtually any other modification, which is why I started with it, but there are limitations. You shouldn't exceed the factory tire diameter by more than a few percent, otherwise your gearing will be so unbearably long that you'll hate driving your rig in high range and will probably break something the drivetrain due to your inability to adequately control wheel speed coupled with the high low down torque of your V8 engine if you have a Lexus GX. If you have a V6 or 4 cylinder off-roader, it may struggle to even move the vehicle at all if your gearing is too long because you upgraded to too large of tires. So that leads me to the next section which covers drivetrain upgrades that enable you to properly run larger diameter tires. Which I'll I'll get to in the next part of this video series. Guys, thank you so much for checking out today's video. Please hit the like button if you got value from it and you want to see more videos like this. Once I finish this video series, I'm going to do a budget breakdown on how much all this stuff is going to cost so that you can plan accordingly before getting into it too deep. So as always, thanks so much for the support you guys. We'll see you in the next video.